What's up, guys? You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn on Revolver Podcasts. I'm an investor and entrepreneur, and throughout this journey, I've worked with and come across some incredible people and experiences that I would like to share with you. On the podcast, my celebrity guest and I will be talking about self-development, entrepreneurship, and overall hustle. If you want to survive this journey, you'll need a strong support system. So we got here as fast as we could. Today on our first episode, we have digital artist, entrepreneur, and co-founder of Iconic, Jeff Cole. This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. Let's get talking about how it is that you got into the design world. What inspired you to do this? Why Why did you pursue this route? Um, well, I actually started art way before I even like had my first memory. It's kind of like walking. Um, my mom put me in private art classes, I think around when I was six or seven years old. Um, after I think I was in preschool and the teacher put my grandma aside when she was picking me up and said, you should save all his artwork. And she's like, why? She's like, he's, you know, exceptionally better than anyone I've ever seen at this age. So my mom put me in, you know, art school at seven. So I just grew up um, doing art. So it's like literally everything I've ever done um, from painting, illustration to 3D, sculpting, um, charcoal, pastels. I grew, I grew up on every art medium there was. And it actually wasn't until almost in the middle of college is when I actually jumped on the computer and I was actually really against it. I hated, you know, any computer based artwork, um, you know, was a huge advocate of, you know, uh, studio art, which I was studying. So once I hopped on basically to earn money and this is kind of when like my, I guess you would say entrepreneur started um, that's when I kind of switched over and to a hundred percent digital art. Yeah, bro. New age digital art is, is something that's crazy. I remember what I was watching a documentary on Netflix the other day. Um, it was about Pixar and it was about when they first wanted to do Toy Story, how everybody was freaking out about how it was going to change, you know, the art industry and how it was going to, you know, certain parts of it were going to die out. But, you know, so many doors open for new things and for new technology that it's crazy, man. Um, how, what, what programs did you first start working on when you first started doing this? Like when you, when you, you're telling me that you were in college and you were, you know, introducing, introducing your, yourself to new things, what programs were you, were you working on? So basically I was a broke college student and I wanted to kind of make some money and kind of start my art career. Cause you know, being an artist your whole life and kind of teachers telling you what projects to do. I just kind of was like fed up with that. So I wanted to start kind of doing it on my own. So I downloaded Illustrator and Photoshop. I've never been on the programs, never knew anything about the programs, but I just knew those are the programs you needed to, you know, create logos and, and do, you know, digital art. So I just was self-taught and just started messing around. Um, and this was, I think I was a junior in college um, at this point. So that's where it all started. What, what was, what would you say was the, the concept that you created that really helped you take off on social media from an engagement and following perspective? Cause I remember following you back when your name was J Cole graphics, you know, you probably had, I don't know, probably like 50, 60,000 followers when I first found out about you and you were doing the sneakers. And I thought that was so original. I remember sending it to all my friends and forwarding it to everybody and saying, yo, this guy's crazy. This guy's really onto something here. I really want to see how he develops this. And now here we are today. You have iconic, you know, you have this massive, you know, operation that you're running and, and you did it based off, you know, uh, a foundation of, of designs and concepts. But what would you say was that concept that really pushed you to be where, to where you are today? Um, well, it first started off with me noticing what was popular on Instagram. Um, and there was a bunch of different buckets. Um, you know, photography was really popular. You know, meme culture was really popular. And motivational quotes were really popular. But then I got into, like, the culture aspect of it. So what was popular in the culture? And that was sneakers. And every sneaker page at this point on in Instagram, like, five years ago, was only posting the sneaker photography that the brands were putting out. So Nike would release official images of the shoe. Um, and everyone was just sharing those same photos. And I was like, there's gotta be, you know, 
deeper content for these people to share organically. Um, so that's where it all started. It all started with just noticing where the attention was and then conceptualizing creative, original creative to go around that because of the massively romantic community around it, um, you know, sneakerhead community. Um, so that's where it all started, just recognizing where the attention was. And then it was like, okay, well now, how do I conceptualize and create original content for this medium on Instagram? So I just, I always started, I'm like, okay, let's mesh popular culture with hyped up sneakers, try and create a perfect storm of, you know, what's relevant in the culture, what, um, what sneakers dropping that's, you know, a coveted drop, um, and meshing those two together and creating a perfect storm. So these, these, um, accounts will post it organically and it kind of worked. Your attention to detail, not only on the design, but on the marketing aspect is really crazy. And I think that's what's really helped really push you, not, not only your career, but your social media platforms, because, you know, a lot of designers like on, on digital media are extremely talented, but they really don't know how to speak to their audience. And I think you've done a great job at marrying those two. What was one of the first like big brands that noticed your work and started sharing your work and that really motivated you to, you know, to continue doing what you were doing? Uh, well, the first, the first sneaker I guess sneaker art design I did was the Red Octobers um, back in 2013 when those um, when those dropped again and then I took kind of a hiatus from it because I didn't really have a following I think I had like 5,000 followers which was nothing back then um, and it wasn't until I think 2015 or 16 when Kanye released the Turtle Doves and, and kind of was like the first release of his Adidas collection that everyone was going crazy on Instagram. And I was like, wow, everyone is posting the same image of the leaked Kanye shoe. And that was it. There was no, there was nothing else for a while. So I was like, there's gotta be a way to, you know, create more content around this buzz. So I decided to do, you know, Kanye's face from the, uh, I think it was the 350 boost. Um, and a bunch of accounts were picking it up. Yeah. No brands were picking it up at this point, but um, as I kind of created momentum and consistency with that style, um, you know, Nike started to pay attention. You know, Nike invited me to the LA, you know, office to talk to their team, um, and then I did a project with Jordan Brand on the release of the Space Jam 11s, and that was really cool. And then Adidas um, started to hit me up for some projects, so it just. It started obviously with the uh, Adidas Kanye design, but it really was from the consistency of that style and just dropping a new design. I think it was like every other day that really got the brand's attention. Because I actually, you know, with everything in art, you need to create, you know, a portfolio which involves consistency and um, um, elevating your style. Let's talk about iconic, okay? Obviously, Iconic is, is your brand right now. This is the brand that you're pushing. You know, it's, it's a brand that's reached, you know, a large scale of success across digital media, across many platforms. Everybody's talking about you guys. How did this idea come to life? How was this born? So Mark Bassendran and I have been working together. He's not, uh, the co-founder and my uh, business partner. We, we've been working together for about nine years on several different companies. Like it was kind of like me and him were kind of wingmen. He did the business. Um, I did the art and we were just at this time living in San Diego. This was three years ago and you could just tell me and him weren't happy. Um, usually me and him are happy dudes. We're usually working on projects we're really passionate about and it just got to a point where we weren't. So, you know, one night I came home and we're like, dude, we, you know, we got to start something, you know, on our own. Cause at this point, me and him were always, you know, the number two and threes in companies where we didn't have much say, um, in, you know, the brand's direction. And yeah, it just, we started thinking about a concept and I was like, all right, well, at this point I started doing a little bit of sneaker art, um, on the side and going back to those three things I was talking about on what people were sharing on Instagram, which was photography, memes, and quotes. And if you know, um, back in the day, these these memes and quotes were, you know, put on the Internet in a very crude way. And like, you know, it was like those texts at the top and they're really low resolution images. And people were sharing these 
um, like crazy. Like they would tag people in it and we're like, you know, let's modernize these things people are sharing on Instagram and create a company around it. And, you know, I created the first, you know, two or three based on just memes. And then once those kind of took off and people were buying them and consuming it, I'm like, all right, well, let's try the second bucket of quotes. And it just kind of evolved from there. But um, that's kind of where it started. Because I've always, I've always printed my stuff on artwork, or not on artwork, but on canvas and put it on my wall just for myself to kind of decorate my apartment. But it got to a point where people are asking to buy it off my wall. And it kind of just, it honestly just happened extremely organically. That's dope, man. How you guys brought that together. I mean, you guys worked together for several years until you guys finally decided you were ready to do something or, you know, sometimes it's not even the time or place. Sometimes you just have to be there mentally. Sometimes you just got to be patient and give yourself the time uh, to allow things to happen. You know, um, a lot of people nowadays, I want to start businesses, want shit to happen right away. It has to be in that exact moment. And sometimes you have to learn a little bit more about the business, about yourself, about your partners before you could really dive in and plunge into something that you're trying to do um would you say that patience was a big factor in you know you developing um not only your personal brand but your business uh was there times where you wanted maybe to start uh, at an earlier time but felt like you weren't ready and maybe you held back a little bit like i said the brand literally started completely organically from just a side hustle and um just trying something we've never done before um like i can't stress I can't stress around patience. Like you can say, yeah, I kind of blew up really fast, but no one really sees me and Mark's journey just working together for nine years. Like nine years is a long time to working with someone every day. Um, And then go back before I met Mark, there was another, you know, 15 years of doing art um, and just trying a bunch of stuff, not really knowing where it's going to go. Like, Since I was a little kid, I had no idea, you know, how I was going to make money doing arts. And that was a big thing with my teachers. They would, you know, they would sit me down after class and kind of talk to me like, do you know what you want to do, you know, with art? Because everyone knew, you know, I was going to do art as my profession. But it was like, well, what is it really going to be, right? You know, I see you drawing and painting and doing all this stuff, but how are you actually going to make money with it? And that was kind of like the whole theme of my childhood is like, how are you going to make money with this? Um, so yeah, I stress patience a lot and everyone sees iconic blowing up, you know, started full time. Me and Marcus started iconic for almost just one year. So it's been a year that me and him have been doing it full time, but we really just jumped in. We, we, there was a a lot of going back and forth on, you know, is this legit? Is this actually going to work? Um, But yeah, it was, I can't stress enough how organic it was and it wasn't a planned attack. It was just, let's just do what we're really comfortable with and what we've been doing our whole lives. Like I've been putting art on paper since I was seven and I'm still doing it. And it took until I was 29 for it to really be recognized. Bro, hard work is not overnight. I mean, you know, I, like like a person like me that has been following you for a while and has actually been a fan of your work, um, it, it's been really it's been really co- dope. It's really cool to see how fast Iconic has grown. But you're right. The 10 years of hard work you've put in, you know, learning different programs, learning about yourself, you know, your family's efforts. It, it, it's so many things that, that come together to make you the designer you are, the person you are, the entrepreneur that you are. And obviously this journey is really, really difficult. Anybody that says that it's a breeze is talking shit because this is not easy. You know, I run several businesses right now. I have so many things going on that I don't even know how I keep it together. Um, I, I can't imagine how people at a bigger scale do it. You know, like you and I have had some pretty cool conversations, like people like Elon Musk, like how does this guy do the things that he does but it's all organization it's all learning from your mistakes and you know just keeping an open mind um what what would you say man um are some of the biggest mistakes that people in your industry um make uh when trying to build their business like some of the biggest roadblocks that you see that people run into that could probably bring our listeners some value as to you know how they could overcome certain speed bumps down the road well it's actually funny i mean i've been a part of a bunch of startups and um a lot of people try and replicate formulas of companies 
previously to them. So they'll either look on different companies and say, oh, well, they did this and they did this. But the way we started Iconic was strictly on how we wanted to run it. We didn't, like I said, every day we woke up was a new day and we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how to run a company. We didn't know how to start a company. So every day we were making mistakes and trying new things and learning. Literally, we're learning by the second. And I think a lot of people, um, when they do startups, they always try and do it like their successors and you know people who came before them. But my advice is to do what's natural and authentic to yourself. And there is, there is no formula to building a successful company. It's It's really just staying authentic to yourself and every day you're going to make mistakes and god we every day we make a, like a mistake but i think speed and obviously work ethic is a way to eliminate that fear you know i, I always say work work ethic eliminates fear and if you knew how hard me and mark, mark have worked and how long hours the days we've worked and the shit we've eaten we're not scared to wake up and make those mistakes and try new things and kind of take leaps and, and, and sacrifices. So, um, it's just like, it's having the confidence throughout those years just makes, makes it all easier to like, to really sacrifice those, those, you know, hard moments and stuff. I think that it's really dope how you guys have, you know, blown up but throughout this journey you guys are creating a series of content that is not only showing people you know what it is to build a brand but you're actually also building brand awareness but you guys you, you guys are keeping it real because there's so many companies on on social media that that just portray everything as fucking perfect everything is always perfect you know um nothing ever goes wrong and you know the fact that you guys could talk about hardships t times that you've eaten shit I, i mean it's happened to me bro there's been times where you know my businesses are fine but i don't even know how i'm gonna buy myself like a meal for the next week you know what i mean like i, I know that i have to uh, dump all my money into my business i don't know if i'm gonna make it past the next week it's difficult and you know it's it's important for people to understand that because a lot of people that want to start a business or you know want to you know go down the entrepreneurial route feel like they're the only ones that are going through the struggle because everyone on social media shows this perfect lifestyle or this perfect life or you know they just they just have this false perception of 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 life of how things actually are and then they are they're scared to take the plunge yeah i mean it goes back to authenticity i mean it's easy to show us eating shit because we're eating shit it's easy to show us building a brand every day because we that's what we're doing and like Like I said, we've only been doing this full time for a year, so every day brings a new problem and a new fire we got to put out. So, documenting that is always going to be authentic because you know, waking up is day one of our journey of building a brand and showing that with people and showing that to everyone is is, is, is exciting, but it's um, it's just organic and authentic, and we don't really um. We don't do that much post-production. I mean, me and Mark are trying to get him, be more front-facing more and more. Um, so that's obviously a struggle because me and him have never done that before. But um, if you do it enough and you have the right team and the people behind you kind of rooting for you and, and you know, pushing you to, you know, just get out of your comfort zone like this, like doing podcasts, be on camera 24-7, talking about your failures is is all a part of being authentic and it's all you know it's, it's all tough um but it's it's who we are so we don't really stress Alrighty, hustlers let's take a quick break you're listening to the hustle inspires hustle podcast with alex quinn on revolver podcast hey guys i want to take a moment to talk to you about wealth nutrition wealth nutrition is owned by my buddy jason stone i want to tell you a little bit about it But before I do, let me ask you a few questions. Are you a hustling entrepreneur that's always on the go? Are you struggling with brain fog in the morning? Do you need help with focus, mental clarity, and drive? Or do you even sometimes crash and need a midday push to keep going? Do you need to wind down at night for a great nice rest so you can kill it the next day? Well, you need to check out Wealth Nutrition. Check out the complete stack. Focusify, morning motivation and nootropic, smooth energy, midday caffeine and boost, and true rest for nighttime relaxation. Make sure to use code 
HUSTLE for 20% off at the checkout. And you can follow them on Instagram at wealth underscore nutrition. I'm not going very far. I'm in a rush. It's too uncomfortable. Sometimes I forget. Don't kid yourself. There's no such thing as a good excuse for not buckling up. If you've used any of these excuses or any others, you're putting yourself at risk of injury or death. In 2017, more than 10,000 people were unbuckled when they were killed in crashes. That's 51% of people killed in motor vehicle crashes that were not wearing seatbelts. No matter what kind of vehicle you drive, wearing your seatbelt is the best defense in a crash. Even if you sit in the back seat, you still need to buckle up. That goes for you when you ride in taxis and when you use ride sharing services too. Cops are on the lookout and writing tickets, so why take the risk? In 2017 alone, seatbelts saved nearly 15,000 lives. So do the smart thing and buckle up every trip, day or night. Click it or ticket. Now, now we've talked about, like, obviously we've been talking about, you know, building the business, failures, you know, um, overcoming those failures, th- certain things to look out for. But now let's talk about successes, good things, positive things that that come from that hard work. Let's talk about where you are today, where Iconic is today. You guys have a lot of cool stuff coming up. I've, you know, I've been reading all the headlines. I've been speaking to you about everything. You guys are working with all types of crazy people. How was 2018 for Iconic? What were your favorite projects? What are some things you have coming up that you maybe want to share with us? Let me know what's up. Um, I say for the first year of when we started Iconic part-time and just as a joke for until now, just building the team has been really exciting. Um, we laugh about it, but everyone we've hired has come to us. So me and Mark never, me and Mark don't do outreach um, for hiring. So the first year was just me and Mark. So any of the photography, videography, artwork, anything you saw came from me and Mark up until like about a year ago. Um, so building the team has been really exciting. And obviously having those people come to us, which means they have the same DNA as me and Mark, has been really exciting watching them grow, teaching people. Um, I never managed anyone before, and either is Mark, but now we have a full team that we've been managing for about a year, and I absolutely love it. I, at first, didn't know how to do it. Like I said, every day is, a new, is, a new, is new for us. So managing people has been really exciting. Watching them grow has been exciting. Um, bringing on Gary, uh, Gary Vanerchuk and Scooter Braun has been insanely exciting just because we see a lot of ourselves in them and we're doing a lot of crazy. The 2019 is going to be a lot of their influence in the brand and um, we're just doing a lot of new, uh, new you know, media content, creating new characters, um, collabing with new artists and new celebrities and influencers. I mean, we're doing, you know, album covers. We're doing so much. Or we're actually starting new mediums this month, um, you know, launching new licenses. So it's we're going really quick and we're kind of every, everything we've been doing for the past year is coming to reality in the next um, couple of months. So it's it's insanely exciting. It's so dope to see you guys working with these brands and working with these people. And I'm, I'm curious, bro, like I, w- I want to hear more about it, because last time you were in Miami for Art Basel, we talked a little bit about it. But. Um, For the audience, talk talk to me a little bit about how you got connected to to VaynerMedia, how you got connected to Gary and how all of that developed for Iconic. So we kind of built a brand. When we started the brand, to to kind of keep the momentum going, we were always listening to Gary's content. um, And it was always a plan to get Gary involved from the very beginning. But we were insanely patient in our approach. Um, They actually reached out to us to do or to me to do the uh, Vayner Sports uh, rebrand, which is like all their style guides and, um, you know, uh, I guess press packets and stuff. So, you know, when they asked, you know, how much uh, we were going to charge them, we said, you know, no, you know, we're going to do this one for free. You know, let's just be in touch. Um, And we just kept hustling, put our head down. And I think around six months later is when we, we kind of asked for like a 15, 15 minute meeting to just go over with Gary what we've been doing and how much his content was influenced in our success in in the brand so far. So that's how it all started. Um, And next month, I believe, or the end of this month, we'll be launching our official Gary Vanderchuk collaboration, which is going to start off with a 10-piece 
um, series with him that it's amazing. It's I took a long time to really think about it and spent a lot of time on this one. So we're really excited for this one to drop. Now, man, how? Tell me, you know, for the people that are dreamers. How does it feel, man, to, to know that you looked up to this guy, right? Like you were watching his content, you looked up to him, how he did shit, and now he's your business partner, you know? Like you guys are doing business together. He's directly involved with your company. You're working with Scooter Braun. Like, bro, you know, I know you're an ambitious guy and, you know, there's a lot more things that you want to do. But to, but, but to the regular people out there listening who have big dreams, you, you fucking did it, dude. Like, you're working with the big dogs. Like, you're really killing it right now. Like, how does that feel, bro? Like, honestly, all business aside, like, do you feel all of this busting your ass has been worth it? Like, for the person that feels like they just want to throw in the towel because things aren't working out, like, look how hard you've worked and look where you have gotten and you've used the tools at, at, at hand. You've, you know, you're a designer. You've used so social media you've been smart about it like how, how do you feel about your own accomplishments man uh it sounds crazy but i literally can care less about what we've accomplished in the past it's i've had this ambition in me since i was a little kid and i just know that i know how much work we put in and how much we've me and mark have sacrificed to get here so when these things happen, I'm not surprised. He's not surprised. And it sounds, it sounds crazy, but to me, it's like everything is crazy until it isn't. So it's like once we accomplish it, it's not crazy anymore. And it's like, what's next? So my, I mean, my advice is, I mean, I wish you just knew and felt what I was feeling when I was a little kid. And like, you have to be passionate about it and you have to love it or else it's just work. So it's not, to me, it's just living my life. It's not, it's not work to me. It's not like, it's, it's, it's honestly hard to explain because when you're pa so passionate about something and you put in so much effort, the things you gain from it, you, you're not surprised by it. And I'm just... I always look forward. I'm, I'm someone who never looks back in the past. I never look like, oh, my God, how do we get here? Like, oh, my God, like, I wish we, this, we should have done this this way. It's, it's, it's moving forward as all time. Like, we're on a rocket ship right now, so I'm not, I'm not you know, opening up the hatch and jumping out. You know what I mean? We're going 15,000 miles per hour. Um, we're going so, you know, super fast. So I'm fixing the ship. I'm, you know... I'm not looking out the window and enjoying the view right now. I'm completely strapped in, you know, and making sure my team is doing everything they're doing correctly and um, always looking forward and, and pushing the boundaries on how we, how we market our product. And it's just, I, I'm honestly not thinking about it. I feel you, man. And I see like, I see the importance of staying grounded, staying humble and realizing that even though you've gotten you know, this far, there's still a ways to go. You know, this is just the beginning, even though everything may look incredible and and everything is, you know, falling into right into place. There's so many more moves that you want to make that people don't know about so many more achievements that you want to get to many more creative things that you're trying to get into. For example, like let's talk about, let's talk about how you guys have expanded into already having a character. Let's talk about Dennis. I saw you guys just recently dropped the commercial and there's, it's, it's this funny ass commercial about Dennis and his life used to suck before he ran into Iconic. Talk to me about that. Uh, this is my most exciting thing we've done with the brand. And um, I joke with my team that it was like my favorite day working with Iconic was like conceptualizing this idea. Um, just because I'm actually really passionate about um, film production and, um, and art direction and, and movies and stuff. So doing this and watching it start from a concept and come to real life um, it's been like literally the most exciting thing we've done. So Dennis is basically the iconic super fan and his life was worthless and he finds iconic art and all of a sudden he finds new hope in his life. And the whole kind of series is going to be about his failures and him like finding an iconic piece and being passionate about it and chasing after that message. And then realizing that maybe that's not for him and then trying something else through another iconic piece. So it's like it's always going to be a revolving door of Dennis's passions, like 
thinking he wants to do something, doing it and realizing it's not for him and just keep going on that roller coaster through his life. So we're kind of documenting his successes and failures and his journey to figure out what he's passionate about through pieces that we design. So it's going to be, and we're also going to be incorporating, you know, influencers and our network uh, through Iconic. So it's it's going to be really exciting. We're actually um, shooting um, a couple other episodes tomorrow, and um, we're writing new scripts, and and it's it's actually really fun because the whole team is involved. So we all sit together in a room, and you know, Austin's involved, Jake's involved, Mark's involved. Um, we get everyone involved, and it's it's probably the most collaborative thing we do as a company now for the listeners the listeners that are asking about the they may be asking who is austin okay austin is a little superstar that you guys have on the team that creates killer content for you guys tell me how old is austin austin is 20 years old but he's 19 at heart um he came to us uh what was it about a year ago um and he's actually the one who kind of convinced us to get on camera and start telling our story because all of our artwork is, you know, hustle and work harder and all this stuff, but there wasn't anything behind it. But we were actually living what I was putting out. And at first it wasn't always that clear. And he kind of reminded us like, yo, like, you know, you guys are living the pieces you guys are putting out. And we're like, damn, you're right. So we should start, you know, documenting it. And obviously with all the meetings we were going in with Gary and all these different celebrities and, you know, um, athletes and stuff so he kind of was the one who kind of pushed us to start documenting and telling our story um and is you know responsible for a lot of stuff you guys see now on the internet this should be this should be a lesson to a lot of business owners out there to be open-minded because you guys here have so many things on the line and you guys are sitting here listening to a 19 year old kid about ideas having to do with content and a lot of issues that I've had because I'm 25 years old and I've been doing this for a while. A lot of issues I've had is a lot of people don't necessarily take you seriously because of your age. But nowadays it's not even about that. It's about the skill. It's about the understanding of social media, the understanding of content and distribution. And you guys have been able to scale out your brand with the help of somebody like Austin who started with you guys. He's 19 years old and he's now 20 and he's on his way to work with some of the biggest brands, some of the biggest people in the United States. It just goes to show that you could be literally any age nowadays and be able to start a business, push a business or be become part of a movement that's bigger than you yeah and it's actually funny austin's now like the oldest employee that's not me and mark it's like now we have like 18 year olds and 19 year olds so um it's important obviously to understand culture and always be tapped into that um but yeah it's it, it keeps me and mark young it keeps us always tapped in um not that we weren't um we were always like into culture and into you know attention and um and he, just the vlogging aspect um, was kind of new to us and, and documenting everything was completely new to us. So now it's it's getting pretty normal and now we're starting to think differently. Um, so it's 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 been it's been good all around. I know we got to start wrapping up soon, but I know you have some Q&A's that you want to get through you have some you, we had um we had a post that we made yesterday and we had some of your fans submit some questions they want they would look for you to answer so i know you've um hand selected a few of them why don't we get into them so actually this is um, an interesting one someone asked what the hardest part of my job is and that actually doesn't really come up that often but um and i was thinking about it and it's definitely consistency um it's funny i go through these like periods where i think I've thought of everything and I'll like every couple of weeks I'll be like, Oh my God, like, I don't think I have any more ideas. Um, like how, how can I, you know, re remain consistent? And that's like the scariest thing I, I think about my job is, um, I think iconic and especially my personal brand is, um, heavy reliable or relied on kind of my creativity. So there's always that fear of like, what do I create next? You know? Um, so my advice, obviously, there is, you know, being consistent. You have to always be practicing and learning your skill set. Um, always be searching for references. And it goes back to always finding inspiration. Like, I can't create something without being inspired by something, whether it's a movie, you know, like a, a meme or something um, someone's posted. It could be anything. But I think consistently staying inspired 
will help you being consistent in your work. I'm with that, bro. And that's a great question that, that that guy just asked or that girl that just asked, because not a lot of people ask that. Like, what is the hardest part of your daily life? Like, or your daily work life. And it makes a lot of sense, bro. Being one of the being one of the leading creatives in the industry, you need to be on top of your game. You need to be really informed about everything that's going on and you need to be more focused than ever because right now all your eyes are all the eyes are on you, right? Building your way to the top is difficult, but once you're at the top, everybody's trying to take your place. Everybody's trying to copy. You don't know how many copycat iconic companies I see on social media that target me with ads and I'm like, guys, like just <laughs> Don't quit your day job, right? You know, like, cause you, you, you gotta, you gotta realize what, you know, you gotta realize where your talents are at and you, you guys are leading your industry right now. You, nobody's doing it like you guys. I've never, I've never seen anybody market themselves from the beginning. Like you guys have the influencer marketing. You know, I remember all the, all the social media pages before. And like you were saying, you guys revolutionized that because you guys actually brought quality to these designs before it was just like pixelated designs, shitty designs. Uh, people were still sharing them, but you guys found a way to pretty much kind of like immortalize it. You know, not only are you going to love it and you're going to share it on your story or on your post, but you're actually going to have it on your wall. You know, I have a I have a really cool video I got to send you guys of of Brett David, uh, the CEO of Prestige Imports down here in Miami, uh, talking to you guys about how you guys targeted him on social media with ads. And he had no idea who you guys were, but the lifestyle that you guys created, you know, the content that you guys created, the quality behind it made him want to just literally make a purchase on the spot and put put the canvases in his house. So it's, man, I congratulate you. You guys have been doing a fantastic job. And in doing so, you guys have inspired so many people. One of which actually had a question for you. And it's, his name is Chris Sweden. And he actually um, designed your Luke Moji. He's based out of Canada. And his question is, what did you think about your Luke Moji? Man, I love it. It's actually, he's the first person who's ever like drawn me or like, like stylized me before. Um, I, I haven't even done that. I'm, I, obviously I did like some self portraits of myself growing up as a kid in like art class, but um, that was like the first one someone else has done. And I, I, think, I think it's hilarious. My whole team thinks it actually looks like me. So it's actually funny. It's good. Yeah, it's super cool. And, and I'll give you a fun fact. Chris actually um, designs emojis for some pretty big entrepreneurs around the world. And he doesn't have a big like he, he just doesn't go doing anybody. So it, it's, it's actually really cool to see him um, bringing you to life because he's done Grant Cardone. He's done the prime minister, prime minister up in Canada. He's done Mark Anthony. He's done so many people that it's ridiculous. And seeing him add you to that roster is just incredible, man. Um, I think it was it was a really cool, really cool little um, gesture on his end. And um, and hey, man, he was my uh, my first cartoon. He brought it to life and he brought to life your first cartoon, which which um, which opens up the topic of conversation for similarities. Um, right before we wrap up, um, I, I want to talk to people about the power of having good relationships and the power of building on your relationships. People want instant gratification and they want things to happen right away. And sometimes things don't happen right away. You know, um, you know, the way we met, we hit it off um, in our Basel in Miami and we ended up, you know, wanting to speak to each other, um, you know, about how we developed our businesses. And in doing so, we found out that we have the same birthday, <laughs> which is crazy. We're both left-handed, you know, it's really, it's, 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 it's silly and it's funny to, to bring these things up, but it's, it's very important when you're building business relationships with people that you understand how they are, what they like, what they're into. If your if your ideas align in order for you to be able to see if there's synergy, you know, since the beginning, I knew that I liked your designs and, you know, sometimes they say, Hey, the people you look up to sometimes when you meet them, it disappoints and shit, but we met you, you know, Michelle and I met you and our team met you and you were a super cool dude. We had so many things in common. And I think it was very important for me to be able to, for my first podcast, because this is my first recorded podcast, you're going to be episode one, for me to be able to share thoughts and go back and forth with somebody who's very like-minded and somebody that I look up to, bro. So I definitely want to thank you for your time, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, that, I mean, that was actually my favorite, one of my favorite parts of Art Basel was literally deciding to go to dinner with you guys um, and like not, not go out and party. Like it's just... Um, it just shows how, you know, important, you know, relationships are to me and how learning and, um, just developing, you know, those relationships are like, 
I could have went out and partied, you know, with everyone else, but um, I decided to, you know, go to dinner with you guys and pick your minds about creative. And I think we picked, I think we went through like tons of different creative that I was putting out, that you were putting out, and just talked about how we can make it better. And and it was one of my uh, favorite things about that trip was just getting feedback. That's dope, man. That means a lot. And yeah. you know what's funny about that night is that night you didn't let us pay for the bill, right? Um, and I told you, I had a hundred dollar bill on me and I was like, you know what? We're going to save this $100 bill and we're going to spend this in LA. And I shit you not Cole. to this day. I just got back from a three week trip in Europe. I went to like 13 cities and I just pulled it out of my wallet. I'm putting it in front of the camera and people who are watching this on YouTube are going to be able to see it. I have the $100 bill and we're going to spend this shit on Los Angeles when I go. And it has the same serial number because I took a picture that night with you in the back of it. And bro, we're going to, we're going to chop it up when we go out there. But you know, Bro, the UADV team, the Hustle Inspire Hustle team is very proud of you, man. We're very excited to see what projects you guys have coming up next year. We're definitely always going to support you guys. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speaking to you, man, taking out the time out of your day to do this. Let's finish off with you answering one question, bro. What If, if you could give your 18-year-old self any piece of advice right now, what would it be? Man, um patience it's it's always for me whenever someone asks me of that you know to go back back in time it's always going to be patience because at that time you really don't know you can't read the future and obviously you know being young you want it now and you see and now it's even crazier back then we didn't have social media but today when you're 18 you see all these 18 year olds that have it now and when i was 18 i didn't know anyone 18 that had it now so Patience is now more important than it was when I was a kid. Um, But if I'm 18 right now and I'm speaking to all the 18 year olds now, it's definitely patience. Um, You know, a lot of people see iconic pop off quick and they see my personal brand popping off quick. But I'm trying to let everyone know that it took 30 years to um, for it to pop off and it can pop off at any second through any piece of content. Um, so it's definitely patience and just be consistent. And if you have a crazy work ethic, it's all going to work out. All right, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, we we'll definitely stay in touch, bro. Alrighty, guys, that concludes this week's episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn. Remember to tune in every Monday for new episodes and stay connected with us on Instagram and YouTube for updates and exclusive content, including a video segment of this week's podcast. You can find us on at Mr. Alex Quinn with one N and at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Remember to surround yourself with people who uplift you because hustle inspires hustle.